What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is Miss Marvel Season 1, Episode 5, Time and Again. So, it's okay. You know, the stuff in this episode was it was it was fine. We actually finally have more of a focus over these past two episodes. We're really actually focusing on the great grandmother's story and the bracelets and the clandestines, which finally remember their name, thank goodness. Um but yeah, we we finally have a little bit more focus. But the problem with this episode also is the fact that it all wraps up, which means now we're going to go back to all of the other stories that we saw at the beginning of the season that I'm just not a big fan of, like the love triangle between Bruno and Kamran, the stuff with her friend running for the election in the mosque, you know, her her brother's wedding, her trying to figure out high school with the, the young, I'm so hip and cool teacher that's really awkward whenever he shows up. So, yeah, just kind of the... Okay, good, but also bad in the same episode, and it's a little frustrating because of that. Um, but, I mean, as far as the stuff that happened in this episode, I mean, most of it was focused on Aisha's story. And it was fine at times, you know, I didn't mind the, the little love story between Aisha and this guy whose name I've already forgotten, essentially Kamala's great-grandfather. Um, you know, they had some, some nice moments between the two of them. They also had some moments where, again, they're trying to force home some sort of message for this season. Um, but overall, I, I was fine with it up until we get to the end. And then all of a sudden, Kamala shows up. And she helps out her grandmother to find her great-grandfather. And she's like, oh, it was me that did this. Um, question, did anybody writing for this show watch Endgame? Because they spent a lot of time, a lot of time, an excruciating amount of time, talking in Endgame about how time travel works in the MCU. And yes, you can argue that the TVA has already kind of done away with that a little bit, because clearly they exist outside of time, so maybe time travel isn't as set in stone as we thought. But... <laughs> If you've created time laws or time logic within the world itself, and then you break that later on down the line, well, you look like you have no idea what you're doing. So why do the writers of Miss Marvel have no idea what they're doing? <laughs> I mean, it's not that hard to keep track of everything that's happened so far. Like, the littler details, that's, that's one thing. Like, yes, sometimes the little details end up not mattering in the long run. Things change. I totally get that. However, <laughs> it's not that hard to remember in Endgame. They set up, okay, if you go back to the past and change that, that's no longer your past. That becomes a new timeline that's going to branch off into something entirely different. And when you come back to your present, it's not going to be this new present you created. It's going to still be the present that you came from. Like, that's how the time travel laws work. So when Kamala goes back in time and changes something which apparently she's always changed, it was always this way, that kind of breaks your own rules, <laughs> you know? So I just, I'm, I'm sitting here going, they, they've lost their mind. They've completely lost their minds. They have no idea what they're doing anymore. It's, it's amazing how this, and you also look at Thor, Love, and Thunder, both of them completely ignore what came before it. And Thor, Love, and Thunder completely ignore what type of character Thor has been for the past several movies. You come to this one, completely ignore how time travel works in the MCU. Totally new, totally changed. We're focusing on just us. We're going to write what makes sense for our movie. Screw everything else that came before. I mean, I'm sure you know, there are going to be a lot of Marvel fans that, yes, when the MCU first started, of course they... They tried to make it all make sense, and they tried to write so that all the things connected. But we're not doing that anymore. We don't really care as much anymore, because we make so much money, we're just going to write whatever, and you're just going to eat it up and not worry about it, because we are, we're the ones in charge here, okay? So just ignore our mistakes and just watch it. And I'm not going to do that, <laughs> because, I don't know, not that I've got grown tired of the MCU, because I still enjoy... A large chunk of it there's still things that I'm looking forward to coming in the future but I have gotten to the point where when they start to make these mistakes they're a lot more apparent they are a lot more frustrating because of how well they've done up to this point so yeah I, I'm kind of frustrated with where the MCU is right now and 
This is another example of it. It's just ignoring stuff that's come before. It's not that hard to not ignore it. <laughs> um, but after that, though, everything sort of wraps up really quick. And honestly, it's all pretty confusing as to what all happened. Now, granted, I don't really remember the story of what happened with Aisha and with uh, Sana. Like, I don't remember the story that they told before, so I don't really know exactly how Kamala plays into all of this. Um, but it seems weird that, first of all, I mean, still not the best character <laughs> in the long run. Like, she's still kind of a brat. She's still going off and doing her own thing. But what exactly did she do here? Like, first she finds Sana after finding Aisha and getting the picture and stuff. She finds Sana, and then she, like, makes one of those little light stands for her to walk on. And then I don't know what her plan was. Like, she could have kept carrying Sana until she found a great-grandfather, but she, like, makes the, the, the stand for her and then tries to get her, I guess, to keep walking on it, but then somebody knocks her over, so she loses it. And then somehow the light from the crystals coming up, which we've never seen it stick around for that much longer after, you know, Kamala has lost control of it, they stick around for whatever reason, and then... Like, for, for some reason, it looks like the grandmother is the one controlling it, and then the great-grandfather happens to see that, and I'm like, <laughs> is this, like, setting up for the story? Is that what we're supposed to be seeing here is, oh, see, this is how it all actually worked out. It just seemed very odd. And then to make things even more odd, she comes back to the present. The veil to the other world that the clandestines have been trying to get to is now open. I guess all it took was just a knife blade to the bangle and boom, veil open. Congratulations. What? And then not only that, apparently it's not even an opening to the other world. It's not even actually like the door. Because it kills the one girl that tries to go in there and then later kills Ez Ezram? Ez Ez I don't remember her name, but essentially Com Comron, because I do remember his name now. It kills his mom <laughs> as well. But I'm just like... So they've been trying to open this thing to get to the other world, but then they just die whenever they're trying to go through the other world. So what... <laughs> Did they not realize this was going to happen to them? Or is this how they get over there? They have to die in these bodies and then they'll be, like, reborn in the other world that they... Or the other dimension that they come from. Like, how does that work? None of that's explained. And then on top of that, even stupider, the, the mother, Kamran's mother, is just like, oh... I have to be the one to stop it. And so she, like, sacrifices herself to it, and somehow that's enough, even though the other girl did the, basically the same thing. <laughs> but for some reason, she's able to close it using her her own life. I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. And then, of course, somehow, <laughs> this leads to Kamran getting abilities. <laughs> because, of course, whenever the mom sacrifices herself to the veil, that will lead to her son getting superpowers. Just like they explained so perfectly. Mm. Oh, I, I miss whenever things make sense in the MCU. Like, sure, a lot of it's sci-fi, a lot of it, it's not logical in our world, but in their world, it made sense. This is just like, oh, nope. None of it makes sense anymore. Even at the end, it's like, well, where did the lights come from? And how come Kamala, like, could do all that? Well, I would like to think that two people loved each other very much and they made something bigger than themselves. What? <laughs> so that's why Kamala has powers? Is because Aisha and her, uh, whatever the great-grandfather's name, like, they loved each other that much that the family got powers? <laughs> is that what they're implying here? Like, what is happening? Does any of this make any sense? Are they just saying just random shit and hoping it somebody out there who thinks they're so much more intelligent than everybody else can get on some web forum and be like, this is what actually happened in all of Miss Marvel. Let me explain it to you because you plebeians are just too stupid and idiotic to really understand it. Oh my god. There's just so much about this ending that I was sitting here baffled that they actually just did all this random shit. Like, <laughs> it really was just random stuff happening. And we're supposed to be sitting here like, Oh, yes, I get it. It makes sense. Because if you think about it like this, it just makes sense. 
So maybe they'll explain in the last episode. I highly doubt it, though, because I I've either I either missed something throughout this season. Like I know the uh, Waleed guy, he explained some about this other dimension in the last episode, and maybe none of that stuck with me. And that's why I'm just forgetting how this might make sense using the logic of their world. But as far as I can tell, it just seemed like a bunch of random stuff happening, and none of it really fit together. It just happened. Uh, so anyways, um, yeah, as far as the the final episode, I mean, I'm not excited again. I don't want to go back to any of these stories because they're stories that I'm not that interested in. Um, also, something that just came to mind, Kamala's acting for this season, I already talked about it before, not exactly my cup of tea. Like, I don't really like this young, spunky, ooh, I can take on the world character with all this, that bit of, like, awkwardness and, like, ooh, yeah, yeah, I'm so cool, but she's not really. I just, I'm not a fan of that. It's very Disney Channel-esque, but even worse. <laughs> like, more current Disney Channel rather than the old school Disney Channel <laughs> that I grew up with. Um, so I, I've not really been a fan of that, but it felt more like a character decision rather than her acting. I will say, though, in this episode in particular, it did take a bit of a hit, like her acting. And I think the biggest scene for me where it just felt very awkward and it didn't work was the scene where she's pleading with Kamran's mom to, like, don't don't sacrifice yourself, you know, don't kill yourself, he, he still needs you. It felt more... I don't know, it didn't feel believable from her. Like, as she's, as she's like, pleading with her, I didn't feel any of it. It felt more like she was just talking to her in a raised tone and just reading lines, and that was kind of it. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I Maybe I'm the only one that felt that way, but it, that scene just felt very weak when it should have been... I mean, granted, I didn't really care about Comron's mother to begin with, so maybe that's why I didn't feel anything in the scene either. Uh, but as far as the acting as well, it didn't really evoke any emotion, emotion from me either. Like, the acting with Aisha and the great-grandfather, that actually did make me feel a little bit of something throughout. But that final scene, I felt nothing. <laughs> so, but yeah, so don't really know what to expect for the final episode. Obviously, it's going to be about the DODC trying to track down Kamran and Kamala and them fighting back against them or... I don't know, like, because the DODC is a government-funded thing, so if they're going to be heroes, they, they're going to have to, I guess, convince them that, no, we're not the bad guys, we're trying to help here. Uh, but, of course, they also probably want to push their message of, like, oh, Muslims are so mistreated by the government, so maybe they'll just take down the DODC, or the DODC will be, I guess, reprimanded or something, I don't know. But, whatever the case, on to the final episode, I'll see you there. And now, episode 6, No Normal. Welcome to the worst Marvel property, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> really hoping it, got, it would just get a little bit better by the end, but nope. <laughs> nope. It just got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse by the end of this. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and talk about all the stuff that just sort of happened. Because that's the thing, none of this really connected together. You know, like, we have, at the end of last episode, we have Kamran getting these powers for no explanation whatsoever, outside of his mom sacrificed herself into the veil or whatever, and somehow that led to him getting powers. So, he's dealing with that. The DODC is coming after him. So, that should be the story, right? Well, it's not the only story, because we've still got the love triangle. We've still got, you know, fighting the, the oppression and the, the FBI constantly hounding people, you know, that are Muslim and how dare they. But we've also got Kamala trying to fit in with her family and then we've got, you know, Bruno leaving and we've got, <laughs> got Zoe suddenly coming back into the story and why she was acting so mean. Actually, that doesn't even get explained why she was acting so mean. She just all of a sudden shows up and it's like, well, why Why haven't you told anyone that Kamala's, you know, nightlight or whatever and she gives this emotional thing. Well, she saved my life. She deserves to tell people when she's ready. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> it's almost like they just brought in a new writer every single day that they were writing this last episode. Because it was just all over the place. Stuff was happening. No explanations were happening. 
it, it was just all going on. <laughs> and I'm just sitting here, what's going to happen next? Oh, okay, now they're fighting off the DODC? Okay. And suddenly they just have this whole Home Alone setup? Cool. Got it. But apparently they have enough guys to deal with all of this and they catch up to him? Cool. Got it. Oh, Kamran's now mad because Kamala didn't tell him that his mom died? Cool. Got it. Okay, now he's a villain? Cool. Got it. It's just, it's all happening. It was all so stupid and pointless and none of it fit together. And again, they have their BS message that they're trying to really push because ultimately that's what they care about. You know, they don't care about telling a cohesive story. They don't care about trying to give you characters that you care about and you relate. No, they care about pushing their BS message and trying to say, Oh no, we care about you. The, min the minorities, we care about you. If you actually cared, you would put some thought and effort into what you're writing. But you're not. You're not putting any thought or effort in into any of this. It's so stupid. And that's my problem. You look at the, the truly great stuff that does discuss, discuss issues like oppression, like how minorities aren't represented, all of that stuff. You, you look at the truly good movies and TV shows that talk about this and deal with this in a way that's actually respectful. They do it in a way inside of a movie that makes sense, that was well done, that was well written, that was well acted. The stuff that just cares about the message first and then tries to write a show around that later, you can tell because most of the time the show sucks. <laughs> and in this case, it happened again. They focused so much on their messages that they didn't care about actually telling a cohesive story. And that's stupid. And again, some of their messages are also very confused. <laughs> so... It's just, it's very frustrating because I'm sure this is going to get a lot of praise because of the messages, because so many people out there want to be woke and they want to support people. And that's perfectly fine. You can support people all you want. But <laughs> when you look at this as a show, as what it's supposed to be, a form of entertainment, it fails on almost every level. And that's just where it is. At least Iron Fist had some solid action. That's the only reason why it's slightly better than this show. But this is the worst of the worst. It's worse than Iron Fist. It's worse than Eternals. It's worse than Thor 2, Captain Marvel, Iron Man 2. It's worse than all of those. Because it's the worst told story in the MCU with some of the worst acting that I've seen, some of the worst effects that I've seen. It's just really, really bad all around. Um few standout points. I already discussed Zoe a little bit, but yeah, the fact that she just suddenly shows up to help out in the final scene. Like, her, her brother showing up, it at least makes sense in the fact that he knows that they're there. So there's a reason for him to be there. Zoe being there and just being like, oh yeah, I knew it was Kamala the whole time, but I didn't want to say anything. Makes no sense in the context of the story. Because she was acting like a total jerk to her earlier. So all of a sudden changing her opinion makes no sense. And they even did the thing with her. She's like, oh, well, it's my platform, but I'm going to give you a platform for your voice. I'm just like, that's so stupid. <laughs> like, that's that's what so many, like, influencers and people, actors, honestly, that's what so many of them think that they're doing. They're like, oh, well, I, I have so many people listening to me that I'm going to use that for your sake. But it's condescending. Most of the time, they're not actually making those voices heard. They're actually saying the exact opposite of what most of those voices want to hear. <laughs> so it's like, it's so hypocritical whenever they do that. But anyways, it was just kind of a funny little side note there. Um, but yeah, the fact that they just somehow set up this whole Home Alone thing, it just, it made no sense. Deaver, the, the woman that works for the DODC, I don't know what her deal was. Like, they tried to show her throughout the season, like, I guess they're hinting that she's racist against Muslims and, you know, Arab people <laughs> because I don't know why that she just was. And so that's why she's all like, oh, my boss just told me that I shouldn't go in. I'm going to go in anyway because I am that racist. <laughs> okay, sure. What happened to the women empowerment message that we were talking about earlier this season? Is it only women of color that should be empowered? <laughs> Again, the message is so confused. <laughs> no idea what they're trying to actually say. But yeah, so her thing of just 
immediately going against what he wanted her to do. It made no sense, uh, either, uh, other than just to set up a climax where they have to fight off all these guys. Because <laughs> it really should have just been, okay, well, I guess he said we can't do it. We're done. I mean, honestly, why didn't the guy, as soon as he sees that they're attacking, he should have radioed in and be like, Deaver is relieved of command, pull out immediately. But instead he waited until after the whole battle was done that he calls her again. He's like, you're relieved of duty. Okay, why are you only telling her this stuff? You should be telling everybody this stuff. Because clearly she didn't listen to you the first time. Um, so yeah, but that, again, that just set up for their climax. And also the, the instant switch for a Kamran. Why? Well, first of all, the fact that they do the liar reveal story just out of nowhere. Bruno's like, you can't tell him about his mother dying. He's gonna figure it out. <laughs> like, he's not stupid. He's gonna realize his mother is gone. So, <laughs> what's the point of this? Well, we have to have Kamran turn into a villain at the end, so that way they can sort of use their powers to fight each other, which they never really did. So I don't know what the point of turning him evil was, other than just to add a little bit of suspense to, like, oh, he might hurt innocent people. <laughs> I don't... I don't know. It didn't lead to anything. There was no real fight. There was one moment where she grabbed him and then he broke away and went outside and then she went out and protected him and then they get knocked down. She's fighting off other guys. He nearly kills people with a truck which she catches and then he starts like exuding his power which uh, did anybody else get X3 ripoff vibes like X-Men 3? Like honestly when I'm watching that scene and he's like exerting all this force and people are getting blown back and she's like pushing back against it. I'm like, okay, so there's Jean and there's Wolverine. <laughs> they are clearly just ripping off this scene, like blatantly. Cool. Um, <laughs> so then, yeah, I mean, all she does is she just stops him with her little bubble and then she lets him escape. He's, what? <laughs> what? Here's your ambition. Flip. 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 We had no idea what our characters want to do. In one second, they're friends. They're nearly about to kiss. And they're about to have this romantic scene. Which, of course, st stupid love triangle. I hate it. Stupid. One that makes me spack some people in the face. But they're there. And then suddenly now he's asking about his mom. He's like, what happened to her? And then he's trying to kill this DODC guy. And then he gets mad at her. And then she tries to stop him, and then he pushes her back. And then they get outside, and he's all evil, and he's trying to kill people. And then she just, like, closes him in. And she's like, no, your mom, she wanted this world for you. And it's said almost exactly like that. Because, again, her acting, whenever she has to, like, raise her voice and these more... You know, there's a lot of noise going on, so she has to scream over it. And it's really supposed to be emotional. She can't do both. <laughs> and it's really showed in these past two episodes. Like, whenever she has to get up there, it just becomes super monotone and, like, she has no idea how to inflect. <laughs> so, you have that scene and somehow that convinces him and then she decides, oh, yes, he's super dangerous. He's tried to kill a bunch of people. Get out of here because you're so cute. I did. Oh. Oh. Get the little fire emojis around his head again. I just want to see him, like, oh. take your shirt off. <laughs> so, yeah, sure. Whatever. Just lets him go. Because, fine. Whatever. Oh, Evey. So, yeah. After all is said and done, it's just, it's such a, a crap series. And I was worried it was going to be crap. I was worried it was going to be too kitty, too high school drama-y, too, you know, especially finding out that she was Muslim, too, oh, we got to stand up for the minorities. Like, And that's essentially all it was. <laughs> like, that's all this show came down to. It was a terrible high school drama that should be on current, again, current Disney, because past Disney, they at least knew how to be funny. They didn't know how to do drama back then either, but they could be funny. Now we're not even funny anymore with it. Now it's like cringe humor, and it's just not funny at all. So it just, it's exactly what I expected it to be. So I, I will say, at least it lived up to my expectations, but granted, my expectations were very low for this show, so meeting those expectations, not a good thing. <sighs> and then I guess we should talk about the, the ending of it, because again, things are just happening. So, first of all, I, I, I did forget to mention this before I talk about that final scene. She's just sort of 
carelessly doing things that people should realize who she is. Like, she's wearing her outfit while she's standing on her roof of her house. And then she just uses her powers to walk off the roof. Oh, she's in costume, guys. That means nobody can realize that she's coming from her house. <laughs> and then she just casually, like, in just normal clothes and as herself, casually uses her powers to walk down to talk to Bruno and Nakia at the end of it. <laughs> You're in public! I mean, yeah, it's, it's a night and there's not that many people around. All it takes is one person just happen to be watching and boom, identity exposed. I mean, how obvious can you get? So that's really frustrating. But no, at the end of it, we have two major scenes that I guess are supposed to be like the <gasps> moments of the show that makes, you know, all of the the Marvel like cheerleaders that don't bother to look at the actual problems in the MCU. It's supposed to make them like squee and just get super excited. So first of all, Bruno's like, I had a look at your jeans. And, well... <laughs> I, I just realized that it's not quite the same as your family, so it's almost like a mutation. I'm like, oh, so this is how they introduce the mutants into the MCU. I mean, obviously, we already had Professor X in Multiverse of Madness, but this is how, guys, through the worst Marvel property in the world, we get introduced to the mutants. So, yeah, that's their clear desperation act of, like, trying to salvage this show and make it worth something. It's like, this is the first time we talked about mutants! <sighs> and then also, just out of nowhere, her bracelet starts glowing, she's in her room, and then she swaps places with Captain Marvel. Which I didn't need to see Marvel's second worst character, because now Kamala's taken that place as the worst Marvel character. But yeah, I didn't need to see the second worst Marvel character in this show, even though she's a big fan of her for some reason. But yeah, how does this make any sense? <laughs> There's no connection between the two of them at all. There's no, none, connection. The only connection that they have is that Kamala's a big fan of Carol. That's it. So how does this make sense, or is is it just more, things are just happening? <laughs> and that's what it is. Things are just happening with no real explanation, no real talking about what's going on, no logical explanation even within the logic of the universe. It's just, she just trades place with Captain Marvel, guys, because we need a funny scene where she all of a sudden shows up in a room and there's a ton of pictures on her wall and she's like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> The show is driving me crazy. <sighs> so, anyways, with all that being said, yeah, this this was a this was a journey, painful slog of a journey. I can only hope that She-Hulk is a little bit better. I have to hope. I have to, cause God, if it gets any worse than this. I mean, again, Thor Love and Thunder wasn't good, but at least it wasn't bad. This was bad. So, Marvel's not doing well for me at the moment. And I don't know how I feel about DC. I mean, granted, they've had their moments where they've been okay. Batman, the, ba the Batman, was pretty good. And Black Adam looks fine. Shazam 2 I'm excited for. So, I mean, if DC keeps on making these pretty cool, like, one-off movies which I think they should sort of stick to because that's their that seems to be their bread and butter at the moment. If they can keep doing this and Marvel keeps doing this, DC might actually start to take over Marvel just a little bit as far as the box office numbers and the popularity cuz yeah. Again, I I'm sure this one will get some praise because of the the woke nature of it and the fact that they they really get to speak their message or whatever and they're speaking for the the, the little people that don't get heard very often. I'm sure that will get it some praise, even though it's not really what TV shows and movies are supposed to be there for. They're there for entertainment. So if that's what you want out of this series, then go ahead and watch it. This is clearly a series for you. You'll love all of the, the times that they really rep and empower people. Because I'm sure that those people are watching this and going... Oh, 
they're talking about me. <laughs> Even though they're not, but sure, whatever. Uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's it's very it's become very obvious that Marvel has really started to take a stand for themselves and you know pat themselves on the back because that's really what a lot of this feels like. I already talked about it a bit in the Moon Knight series, you know, that one moment of Layla and then the girl being, "Are you an Egyptian superhero?" "I am." It's like you're very clearly just trying to represent these these other cultures and represent these people. But you're not really doing it in a way that one makes sense, two is subtle, or three fits within. I mean, Layla, granted, that Moon Knight show was it was pretty good, it was solid overall. But Miss Marvel, like, it needs to fit within a solid show with good writing, because if not, then you're just trying to use that to cover up all of the blemishes that you have in your show, and it doesn't work for people like me who I don't really care about your woke message. You know, not that I'm saying that representing all people is bad or wrong. Like, clearly, we're all humans and we all deserve to have our time to shine. <laughs> you know, even though, for some reason, representing, having one person, like, represent an entire group of people, like, that shouldn't be right. <laughs> because if so, then you can use one bad person to represent, represent an entire group of people as well. <laughs> so it's like... You can't use the opposite of what you claim that people like me do to fight back against that. Like, that's kind of stupid, and it doesn't make sense. And again, it's just there because they know they've got nothing else. They know this show is terrible. They know that their the writing team is bad. <laughs> all right? I hope they do. So that's what it feels like. It's just a distraction from all of the stupid stuff that they put in this show. And all of the terrible writing and the bad action and the bad CGI. They had some more of that in this episode. The the very rubbery legs. They made sure not to go up because you couldn't they they couldn't do a CGI of her face or anything. So we had to watch her rubbery legs that didn't look human at all run across the top of stuff. Oh my god, this whew. I actually have seen some articles though talking about Marvel mistreating their uh, VFX artists, so Maybe it's just, it's finally starting to show these people that have been pushed way too hard and treated very poorly. Because, I mean, it's kind of something that's been a thing for a while. Typically, the the artists at Disney have not been the best treated. You know, there's a lot of talk of what Walt Disney did back in the day with the sweatshops. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these VFX artists are like, nope, you got a deadline, you got to meet it, or you're not leaving. <laughs> wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. And a lot of them... It just, it's a detriment to their work because of that, because they're not really being allowed to function properly. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to get off my soapbox about this show because it's over. I'm done. I'm moving back on to my other shows. <sighs> I'm tired. I kind of want to sleep now. But anyways, that's it for me. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on this series as a whole? Let me know what we can talk about and all that. Let me know. We can talk about it and all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Marvel reviews, and I'll see you guys whenever the next one happens. Peace out.